Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in today. I want to talk about a technique that I don't ever really hear anyone talking about. I don't know if it's because it's a technique that I just don't know another name for it and people are talking about that name and I don't recognize it, but it's something that I don't ever really see anyone doing either. And it's a technique that I, uh, I learned from Luke Clausen years ago. And I've never seen anyone else do it. I know he does it a lot. I've done it a lot since then with really good success. It is a fantastic cold water technique. And what I call it is pendulum fishing. And what I mean by pendulum fishing is I'm throwing a bait out, engaging my reel, and letting that fall back to the boat without reeling line in or imparting any action into the bait. I throw it out let it literally swing all the way down and come back to the point where it's underneath the boat. Really slow technique, something that takes a lot of patience, but that's one reason it works really well in cold water is because you're letting that bait just flutter past fish that cannot resist eating it. So I've got two baits that I do this with. The first is just a small swim bait. You know, this is a 3.3 Berkeley Power Swimmer on a Dirty Jigs Matt Stefan Guppy Head. One of my favorite uh, little combinations for catching fish really any time of the year. But it works just fantastically for pendulum fishing. And the reason for that is because you've got a 90, deg 90 degree line tie on the head. So when I throw this out and engage it, that line tie is going to want to keep the head of the bait up. And therefore it running more parallel in the water, which looks more natural. The other key to using a swim bait for this technique is you need a swim bait that has a very soft tail. So you want one that will kick as the bait's falling. You know, the power swimmer works great, Kitex work great, but what you don't want is one that's stiffer and, and will not kick on the fall. You wanna have that little kick, nice, real slow wobble, just to get you a little bit of motion because you're not going to impart it either through your real your actual retrieve and you're not going to impart any action based on your rod so you need the bait to do a little when you're talking about the small swim baits the other bait that i like to use is just a straight tail worm like your basic shaky head type worm uh, this is the Berkeley Shaky Snake, one that I really like uh, utilizing this for. It's got a lot of action in the in the back end. But you're not, you know, again, you're just going to utilize whatever your favorite straight tail worm is will probably be good enough for it. Uh, when I'm fishing this, this is more of a um, spring, summer type bait for me when I'm doing this technique. And I'll usually throw it on a tungsten head with a light weed guard because I may be around brush or docks and I don't want to get stuck. So with both of these baits, I've got really specific places I like to fish them. So when we're talking about the winter time period, like we're in right now, that's when a small swim bait comes in really handy. So what I'll be looking for are really steep dropping break lines where I'll have the boat in say 30 foot and I'm casting the you know, along a break line edge where the top of the flat is maybe eight or 10 foot. And what I'm looking for are areas where I know I've got bait fish that are out deeper, you know, whether you've got shad or you've got Cisco or whatever the bait fish is, you want to find areas where those, those bait fish that are out deeper can easily get pushed up against that break line. And that therefore they become very good forage for the bass. So I want a really steep break line. And what I'll do is I'll parallel that break line. So I'll try to keep the boat, say, in, you know, say 30 foot. And I want to throw to where my bait is going to swing pendulum right down that break line. So it literally, at times, I'll never even hit bottom. It'll just swing back to the point where it's in 40 foot of water underneath the boat. Now, there are times when I do that where it eventually will hit the bottom. When that happens, I'll reel it up quick so that it's, say halfway back to the boat and I'll just let it swing back down. I mean, that's all I do. So I'll do that two or three times on a cast with the little swim bait and let the swim bait do the work. The key here is you want it to be such a slow retrieve that the fish cannot pass it up. So it looks like it's a dying shad or a dying Cisco or alewife or 
blueback herring, whatever it is, it looks like it's dying because it's just barely moving through the water column and the fish cannot resist that. And those steep break, breaking, uh, you know, shorelines, it works great on bluff walls too, by the way, but you want more of that vertical drop that you're fishing, whether it's a steep break, uh, drop off, drop off, or whether it's a bluff wall, something along those lines where you can basically let the bait parallel that cliff or the wall or the drop off and just swing right along the side of it that's where you're going to get your bites and that's what i like to throw in the winter is a little swim bait in the spring pre-spawn period this is really good so spring period even into the summer when i like to throw the worm is when i'm fishing around deeper docks i'll throw the worm under the dock and let it pendulum back under the dock and if I'm fishing around brush piles that are down deeper, I like to cast out over the brush pile and let this swing back over the top of the brush pile. The fish will come out and eat that all of the time. It is such a non-invasive bait to them where it's almost like they cannot resist eating it because it's just this bait that slowly you know, sliding past them. And I like to throw the lightest weight possible because I want my bait to move as slow as possible through the water column and that's where I'm throwing if I can get away with it, a 16th ounce head or an eighth ounce head on both these baits if you do have some wind you're going to have a really a tough time fishing it unless you move up to a heavier head which still will generate bites but I don't feel like I get nearly as many bites when I'm doing that so really the difference for these two baits and again the swim bait works really well on the docks as, as well like floating docks is when I'll go with a swim bait uh, quite a bit, but if I'm fishing more docks that say have uh, pillars that are holding the dock up and 15 foot of water, that's when I like to go with the worm just because again, I can fish it weedless and it, you got crossbars and things that tend to really hang up a swim bait more. But that is a technique guys that I think you need to think about utilizing. So if you do get out on a lake this winter, try what I call pendulum fishing, uh, some deep, deep break lines, bluff walls, that type of thing, throw the bait out, engage it, just let it swing back. And this spring, especially during the pre-spawn period, if you've got some docks that have some big bass that like to hold on them, big spotted bass, don't forget to throw your favorite straight tailed worm on a light weight as well, and just let that swing back to the boat. Real easy fishing. It's a, a fun bite when it's on. Give it a try, guys. I hope it was helpful. If it was, hit that like button and stay tuned for tomorrow's video.